We visit with pipe organ builder John Nordley about the first organ he built 37 years ago at the First United Methodist Church in Appleton. When, when I was very young, probably about 19, oh, I'm going to guess 58 or so, I was with my family, a member of First Lutheran Church in Sioux Falls. And at that time, they acquired a new pipe organ. They bought a new pipe organ. And I was six, seven years old. And my mother said, I came to her at Christmas, and I said, what I really wanted for Christmas was a pipe organ. And she said, no, you know, that's, she thought I just wanted a little instrument or toy or something. I said, no, I want that big one like they have in the church. And that's kind of how it got started. It was always in the back of my mind. Rolling on, I you know, graduate from college, and I went out east to Boston. I interviewed with three different companies. I picked the company that I wanted to work for. They all offered me jobs. And I went to work for the Nowak Organ Company in Georgetown, Massachusetts. And it was a delightful place to study. There were organ concerts going on every weekend. I did my apprenticeship. I was there for two years. And at the end of the, my two years, um, I came back to, an ins to install an organ in 19... 76. It was March of 76 and it was at uh, Gustavus Adolphus and as I rolled into the, the school you know and, and went into the commons my name was being announced on the PA system and I was supposed to pick up a certain phone and I went to the phone and who should be calling me but uh, a Reverend Richard Coleman. I met John at Gustavus Adolphus College where he was doing some repair work on a small practice organ there. Our organ committee, which had been appointed by then, decided to interview this young man and see what he was like. We probably sat down, we sat down across the way here in the parish hall and talked for a couple hours. And one of the last things he asked me was, well, so what would you know, what would you design for an organ for this church if you were doing it? And I sketched something on a, we always say napkin, but a piece of paper. And he said, well, the stop list, and I drew the stop list, what it would look like. I must say the committee interviewed at least uh, three different firms. The kicker was probably John's drawing of this instrument and how it would look in the situation. And I think that appealed very much to the committee. And he said, you know, he said, we're going to be signing a contract soon. He said, if you'd be interested in building that organ, he said, I think we would hire you to do it. Completely out of the blue. I had no idea that that was coming. And I was, wasn't quite prepared for it, really. John is a very meticulous craftsman. He's a very good businessman, too. He's a person who can be trusted, but he knows the physical craft of organ building. And that did impress the committee. I remember he brought in the keyboard to show us, uh, that he had created, to show us uh, to the committee. And it was great uh, to see that kind of craftsmanship. So it's reliable craftsmanship over a long period of time. The basic priority is to support congregational singing in a small situation like this, hymn singing. The vitality of hymn, hymn singing is very important. The pipe organ is a wind instrument. And the committee wanted the genuine article, a pipe organ, if possible, in a small situation. Um, and it was possible because uh, farm prices were good then, and John's first uh, proposal uh, had a decent price attached to it. Well, actually, I got the check before I ever left Massachusetts, sent it to my mother, and told her, it said, set up a checking account with this money. And that's what she did. And I, she said, what, what name? I said, just call it J.F. Nordley Company. And uh, that's really how it got started, just that fast. Anyway, I moved back, started designing and building immediately. And in the, the spring of 77, we were ready to move this instrument into place. The condition of it today is just like the day it was put in. I can't tell any difference. It's tuned, it's wonderful, it's always more wonderful than I remember. It's a one manual pedal. Uh, it's small, but it has a wonderful small variety of sounds in it. The, the sounds make a big difference. They're very present to the room, and it helps you become a better musician when you practice on it. 
This instrument in Appleton is the first organ that I ever built. And um, it it's, means a lot to me that it still has such an incredible draw after 37 years. You know, it's history. Uh, you know, people love to come and hear it. I still love to come and hear it. What we did today was we came up to look at the instrument to figure out, and it's spring now, so things are calming down. We found a few little ciphers where it was, you know, speaking just a little bit when it shouldn't, and we adjusted those, and then we had to tune the instrument. This instrument's been very stable in the tuning. I think it probably, well, today we tuned three pipes in the organ out of what about 600 pipes and there were only three that needed to be real really needed attention we have a program coming up in sioux falls and it's for for young pianists who want to learn something about the pipe organ and so i was talking to my brother paul and we came up with a method of making a pipe like this little wood pipe that was completely cut on the computerized router. So we could cut about 20 of them at a time out of one block of wood. We have and glue them together and, and make them very fast. So in a matter of a couple hours, he produced 70 of these little pipes. But the neat thing about them is that a student can look at this and um, they can learn a little bit about how a pipe is made. They can also blow on the whistle. And they can practice some of the theory that goes you know, into pipe organ building. This is an open pipe. If it had a stopper on the end of the pipe, which you can do with your thumb, it's roughly an, uh, an octave lower in pitch. So this is without the stopper. And with the stopper, the largest flue pipe in the Appleton organ is uh, eight feet long, but it's stopped, so it's actually playing a 16-foot pitch. So that's pretty low. That's about, I'm going to guess, about 32 vibrations per second. They're almost like, somebody once said to me, it's, it's kind of like your children, actually. And I said, it, it is. I kind of have, you know, a lot of them out there all over the place, these little pipe organs that are you know, kind of like my children. You know, and kind of like children, sometimes, you know, you're really happy with them and sometimes, you know, they misbehave. But uh, this one's been a really good instrument. <laughs> it's, it's stayed in tune. It's worked well. You know, it's just been a, a great instrument to have in my, uh, my opus list and this being opus one.